Hello everyone and welcome back to our discussion of Julius Caesar. Today we're going to be doing Act 5, Scene 3, which means we only have today and tomorrow's video left before we finally finish the tragedy of Julius Caesar. So in today's scene, we're in a different part of the battlefield. So remember, they're still at Philippi. And the last thing that we saw was the meeting of these two forces, Octavius and Antony on one side, and Cassius and Brutus on the other. And in today's scene, we see the fighting finally begin. And key things we're going to be looking at here is we see that the forces of Cassius, at least, take a great loss against Antony. And this is going to send him into a downward spiral of sort of defeatism, right? And this is going to come to a head when he believes that Titinius, his best friend, is found dead. And he, rather than sort of fighting further in order to honor the memory of his friend, chooses to take his own life, only to tragically find out that this isn't the case. Those of you who are familiar with Romeo and Juliet will see that this is a rather familiar scenario that Shakespeare clearly likes to put his central characters in. And so the scene is going to tragically end with Brutus discovering the bodies of both Cassius and Titinius. So in this scene, we're going to be dealing, of course, with Cassius, Titinius, and then Pindarus, who is the bond servant or slave of Cassius, Masala, Brutus, and Cato. Before you go ahead and watch the rest of this scene, please do make sure that you've gone ahead and read scene three, because we're going to be skipping over the dramatic reading and diving straight into analysis. So we're going to open this scene with the understanding that things are not going well where Cassius and his troops are concerned. And we see, based on this discussion between Cassius and his best friend Titinius, that the battle is a complete disaster. Cassius's men are deserting left and right because Antony is literally killing them on the battlefield with his his troops and we also see that Cassius has gone so far as to kill his own bannermen meaning the the flags that we talked about in the last video that they would march into battle with the man who's responsible for holding this sees what's going on tries to flee and Cassius kills him for the treacherous act of desertion and then we jump in and we enter with Pindarus, and he is going to be the bondman or the slave of Cassius, but we, we shouldn't think of that in a negative sense, because as you saw through the reading, Pindarus and Cassius are actually fairly close, and Pindarus is greatly loyal to Cassius. And here Pindarus enters with the news for Cassius that Antony is in his tent, Right, meaning he has breached those lines, and the enemy has gotten far more ground than any of them would like. And so here we see that Cassius, after learning this news, requests of Titanius that he take his own horse. So here, Titanius, take my horse, go to the battlefield and, and see those troops that are, that are coming for us, and tell me if they are with us, meaning the other troops of Brutus, or they are our enemy, they are the troops of either Antony and Octavius. And so Titinius, being the best friend of Cassius, of course, agrees to go and do this. We also see that Titinius and Cassius have a greatly close relationship with one another. And because of this, Cassius fears what might happen to him. Right? Remember, if the troops that he's going to meet are, are their foe, it's not going to end well. So Cassius orders Pindarus to ascend this hill overlooking the action and to, to keep a watchful eye on Titinius and to relay back to Cassius what happens. And unfortunately, through what he sees, Pindarus reveals that Titinius has been taken by troops, troops with both, which both Pindarus and Cassius believe to be the troops of Antony or Octavius, meaning that all is lost. And so in this moment of despair and great pain, all Cassius can think of is the loss that he's experienced, right? He believes his friend is going to die at the hand of the enemy. And so here we see that he resorts to suicide and not just killing himself, but ordering Pindarus to do so. And, and that might sound really weird, but here we get to see background on how Pindarus came to be the bondsman 
of Cassius. We see that in this other battle that's taken place well prior to this, that Cassius saved the life of, Par of uh, Pindarus in Parthia, and that as such, right, Pindarus now has an oath to keep the word or command of Cassius, right? I owe you my life. And so here he's essentially telling Pindarus, take this sword, my sword, and kill me with it, right? And I will hold your oath fulfilled. But again, and this shows the, the great depth of the relationship that they have with one another, although Pindarus agrees and he does what he's asked because of the oath that he's made, he does so unwillingly. And we see that here, he says, so I am free, yet would not so have been, durst I have done my will. Meaning, I would still be a slave to Cassius, and happily so, if I had had my own way and not had to kill him. And so this really shows the depth of love that at least Pindarus has for Cassius, in that he would rather still be his slave than to see Cassius dead. With that, we see Pindarus has, has left, right? He's no longer the bondsman of Cassius, so he has no reason to stay and, and really no reason to give his life for a cause that wasn't his own in the first place. And this is where we see Titinius re-enter with Masala. And if you're paying great attention, that means that there has been an error. So Cassius is mistaken, and more to the point, Pindarus is mistaken, because he didn't exactly see who these troops belonged to, right? In fact, Titinius goes to meet with the troops of Brutus, so it turns out to be their friend. And we also see that Brutus's troops have been successful in beating back the troops of Octavius. So even though Cassius and his troops have been defeated by Antony, Octavius and his troops have been defeated by Brutus. So really, in terms of warfare, they're still on even ground. But unfortunately, as they see when they, they approach the body of Cassius, they, they realize that he has taken his own life. And here we see Titinius use a simile in particular to really show the depth of his mourning for Cassius. And he compares the red rays of the setting sun to the blood that's flowing from Cassius. And, and he rightly guesses that this is a, the result of what he says, a mistrust of my success hath done this deed, meaning that Cassius didn't believe that I would be successful in my undertaking, and that's why he's taken his life. And Masala, through the use of personification, seconds this, right? Personification in, in the use of, oh, hateful error. Note that error is capitalized, treating it as a proper noun or a person. In addition to melancholy child, meaning the child of sadness. And he mourns this, and he says, why dost thou show to the apt thoughts of men the things that are not? Meaning, why do you show to men things that are not true? Why have you deceived Cassius, and by this deceit cost Cassius his life? And here we also begin to, to learn that Masala is going to take this news of the death of Cassius to Brutus. And, and here, based on what we mentioned in terms of his uh, reaction to the death of his, his wife Portia, we can infer that he's going to take this news stoically, meaning he's not going to mourn publicly as we see Masala and Titinius do, but rather that he's going to mourn in private. And now we see with the exit of Masala that Titinius is left alone with the dead body of Cassius, his best friend. And he, he goes again through the, the mistake that Pindarus has made Again, that the troops that he met with on the field were the troops of Brutus, and that, in fact, they had sent Titinius with a crown to give to Cassius as a sign of victory. And again, something just to, to note as we're paying attention to the, the plot of the story, just as Cassius, believing that all his lost, right, in, in terms of the death of his friend Titinius, takes his own life when he is left alone by Masala, now when Masala leaves Titinius, we need to think, what can we infer he is going to do with the death of Cassius?
And so here we see that, just as we probably inferred a moment ago, he's going to react to the death of Cassius by taking his own life. And, and here we see that this is going to be a death that is viewed as honorable in ancient Greek culture, right? Not only does Cassius commit suicide and tote throughout the play the, the honorable nature of suicide, but Titanius does as well, right? By your leave, gods. This is a Roman's part, this referring to the act of suicide, and he ends his life by killing himself with the sword of Cassius. And now here we re-enter with Brutus discovering the bodies of both Cassius and Titinius, and here he makes a strange statement. O Julius Caesar, thou art mighty, thy spirit walks abroad and turns our swords in our own proper entrails, entrails meaning intestines. And so remember, we, we made a note that Brutus has already been visited by the ghost of Caesar in Act 4, which we passed over. But we're going to see that this experience sticks with him. And now he's relating the deaths of two of his comrades to this experience, right? That the ghost of Caesar is taking his revenge upon all of them. And we also see that we were right to infer that Brutus is not going to mourn publicly, right? He didn't mourn publicly the death of his wife, Portia. He's certainly not going to do so for Cassius. And, and he even says, uh, in a sense, right, I am not going to cry the tears I should for you now, Cassius, right? But I, I will do so later. I'll find a time. And even more than this, right, it's not just about not mourning him on the spot. He also sends away the body of Cassius, so literally uh, pushing away his death by removing that, that presence of it, but also figuratively in the sense of he turns immediately back to focusing on battle, right? So not dealing with his emotions, constantly pushing them down and dealing with what is ahead of him. That is going to be it for our analysis of Act 5, Scene 3. Please do read Scene 4 and 5, very short scenes, and that will finish up Julius Caesar in its entirety. So that means we only have one more video together before the final exam.